Uh, hi, I'm Vandana uh, and uh, I'm working as a security architect with one of the MNCs and I'm also working with certain communities to um, to share knowledge on security and uh, also to bring more women or diversity and inclusion in security. Um, so I'm one of the chapter leaders for OWASP Bangalore. OWASP is an open community for uh, web application security standards and uh, I'm also working with um, uh, so OWASP has a project called Women in Apps I'm their Asia lead and uh, I am also running a community in India uh, that's called InfoSec Girls. So I'm heading that and uh, trying to spread the arms around uh, uh, the region so that we have uh, a greater space for uh, women in security. So today I will be walking you through uh, cloud security and there are misconceptions and myths around it. And uh, myths can be positive and negative. So positive in a way that in, uh, wherein uh, people are sticking or the organizations are sticking to cloud because they think that this suits them best and they cannot do something else. And negative in a way wherein they're trying to be away from the cloud providers or uh, cloud environment in general, or uh, they think that um, my data is not secure in the cloud. So we'll just be walking you through with it. And then we'll be talking about uh, certain ground realities uh, in the cloud. So when, when I started off or when I started hearing about cloud, or uh, cloud computing. This was my assumptions that, am I gonna be throwing balloon in the air or what it is gonna be, how it's gonna be looking like? So I started reading and I started researching about it. Then I got to know that there are multiple vendors who, who help you in hosting your data so that uh, you do not have to procure the hardware and you don't have to do much of a headache. Uh, you don't have to take much of a headache, but they will help you in bringing up the servers, bring, uh, help in scalability. So this is a usual intro wherein uh, uh, you have cloud computing services. So you you take help from the cloud providers through servers, storage, database. Um, the, you host your software and people leverage the services uh, from you over the cloud. And uh, there are different models available wherein uh, there's a private cloud, public cloud, and uh, there's a hybrid model wherein you have some data in-house and then um, some data you have it on the cloud so you just build the services uh, so that you can have connections back to um, your internal service because you might not want to have everything shifted to the cloud or you think that um, i'm abiding by certain you know, uh, laws or uh, certain re uh, restrictions which i cannot go ahead and move to the cloud so um, there are different service models uh, in the cloud, which is infrastructure as a service, platform as a service, and then you have uh, software as a service and so on. So um, I'm, now when we talk about these uh, service model, let's take a look at the traditional model that we have currently, which is an on-premise model, uh, wherein um, if you consider it as a pizza, uh, that will translate wherein uh, you would be doing everything yourself, uh, buying. Uh, uh, the ingredients, uh, arranging the table, uh, cooking it, everything that you would be doing your, 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 on your own. You cannot rely on anyone else. Anything goes down, you would be responsible for it. So uh, there's somewhere I read um, a great thing, like uh, it's milking your, own uh, milking your own cows and uh, kneading your own dough. So you have to do everything on yourself. He, now, now another thing would be uh, wherein you take and bake, wherein uh, you go and get the frozen pizza, heat it up and just eat it, wherein uh, you have infrastructure as a service, you don't need to buy uh, any hardware, you are uh, taking the infrastructure from the cloud provider. So um, infrastructure as a service usually means that you uh, you have a vendor that takes care of the hardware, uh, which is running the content management server, making sure the server, storage, uh, uh, load balancers, network, and what all um, we have at peak performances that is in place for you. 
apart from that, uh, there are other models wherein um, when we say platform as a service, you don't even have to manage the underlying operating hardware or a software. Um, so when we take an example in the Pizza world, so I really like this concept of Pizza as a service. So that's why I'm just trying to explain it in that way. So in the Pizza world, all you need to do is uh, uh, set the table because um, the pie will be delivered to you ready to eat. Just set the table and they will be giving it to you. Uh, the only thing you would need to do uh, or the concern, you need to be concerned about it is the content management system itself. Uh, the infrastructure and the platform would be taken care by the vendor. And finally, we end up um, with a software as a service wherein we have been using their, uh, the softwares and the services on the cloud. You just have to maintain the credentials. That's about it. But that's again a big thing wherein you are, you don't have to manage uh, or worry about patches, security and maintenance upgrades. The team would be taking care of, the cloud service provider would be taking care of that. Um, so this is our pizza. It's ready just to be served. You just have to eat it up. That's about it. Now, these are some uh, common uh, public cloud vendors that we have. Uh, we have IBM Cloud, uh, Amazon Web Services, uh, Microsoft Azure, Google Cloud uh, Platform and, or GCP. And there are many others which are there in the market. So these are the top ones which I could just uh, pick up and uh, uh, post it here. And uh, we have Alibaba, Red Hat, and then so on. So, Let's go for the general myth, uh, which are uh, as part of the security we have. So one of the biggest misconception that you hear uh, about the cloud is data is safer within the four walls of organization uh, than in the hands of a cloud security provider or cloud service provider. Uh, but in reality, there have been no evidence. There have been actually no evidence that that actually indicates that cloud service providers have performed less securely than the end user organization. So um, there's also a, a research firm which has uh, published a security report, which is Gartner. Um, the recent history of public cloud um, was demonstrated that the brand name uh, extremely uh, provision multi tenant services are not only susceptible to attack, but are also um, more secure starting point than the more traditional in-house implementation. Uh, and also, now when we talk about another uh, uh, cloud security myth or uh, uh, cloud computing myth, wherein uh, a cloud server has unlimited resources, it does. But again, it may appear that your cloud server has uh, unlimited memory and processing power, but consuming more than you need or um, allocating more than you need would actually raise the price. So you are increasing the price yourself than uh, somebody else doing it. Uh, another um, very interesting um, uh, myth or misconception that cloud is more susceptible to breach. Cloud would be susceptible to breach, but there is a model that is there, uh, which cloud providers specifically say that it's a shared responsibility model, wherein a few things cloud service provider would do for sure, but uh, how about responsibility of, uh, of the organization? They are posting the data on the cloud. They are keeping the data on the cloud. Um, cloud provider would be taking care of the encryption um, and making sure that your infrastructure is safe. They are going through the rigorous test um, without going those rigorous tests or the audits or those compliance check. Cloud provider cannot open up uh, their services to the, uh, to the whole world. So they have to go through the rigorous test, then only they do it. But an organization also has to make sure that they, um, they are taking care of that shared security model. So it's, it's actually a flip side um, wherein if I trust the cloud to be secure, once I set up my cloud, I'm done. I don't have to do anything. I have, uh, I have heard, I have seen people saying that, but that's, that, there's a catch here. Of course, uh, uh, that the cloud, is secure, the cloud provider, but the cloud provider is only responsible for securing their infrastructure. 
you are responsible for your data and the application stored on that infrastructure if there is a vulnerability in uh, one of the platform that you are or uh, uh, the back end uh, uh, application that you are owning which cloud provider has nothing to do you have to patch that they're not going to patch that if there is a platform where you have hosted and you are supposed to take care of the platform cloud provider cannot do anything if the breach happens you are totally responsible for it they will ensure what they provide uh, you can go through the guidelines that they have given when you're signing a contract read through it properly but what you put in the cloud or on the cloud is your responsibility uh, cyber criminals are uh, still targeting your applications and the stolen credentials so you need to have you need to have the ability to identify uh, the threats and control who is accessing the information uh, you have a so i'll give you an example you have um, a house with multiple doors and windows even perhaps alarm uh, you have the tools but you still have to lock the doors you can't say that i have locked all my doors and uh, but the windows are open and nobody can come inside my house so you have to close the windows set the alarm you have to practice you have to practice good cyber security um, good cyber security hygiene the cloud is no more secure than you make it so you have to make sure you work on that practice um, another um, good misconception or uh, uh, another myth is that no you can no way figure out who has access to your data it's actually you, you can do it when you have proper groups proper users proper uh, policies assigned to prop so if you have a proper hierarchy set like you you uh, you're not letting the people use or um, your teams use the root accounts or uh, the master account uh, but creating the groups understanding who needs what access and assigning the right policies to it assigning the right set of rules to it and then um adding those users to it then you are creating your own hierarchy you know who's doing what and if something happens you would be able to figure out who did it where actually the lack was um now apart from that um, you as we discussed there is a less control over data that's not the thing they will actually give you the required uh, set of accesses and required set of information that you actually need for the cloud um, uh, so now they have all the cloud providers are seen that they keep on giving you services so that you can monitor uh, so those services are free of cost a lot of services are free of cost for you to monitor your own data on your own services whether any kind um, any kind of breaches uh, somebody is trying to breach your system or somebody is trying to sniff your credentials there are many services which are there but you have to leverage you have to take care of uh, your own accounts you can't say uh, that my account is secure if i have a six digit password there are there are people who is who are still practicing that you need to have proper um, implementation uh, configuration in place when you are using because the infrastructure is there but the security is in your hands and uh, um, another important thing is that uh, a cloud is there but there can be human error so accidents can happen um, uh, the recent breaches or the data breaches that that have happened uh, the research have shown that 30% uh, 34% of the data lost in the first half of 2018 through breaches were caused by the accidental losses that means oops someone le uh, someone left the data exposed and opened to breach third parties do increase your risk and uh, if i say that uh, what about the third parties who access your data in um, day in and day out you have the integration with them but you just forget about that um, even uh, there's a password management company they announced early last year uh, that uh, uh, they exposed a file with 2.4 million names password hints and uh, encrypted passwords on an unprotected server even later in january another astounding breach uh, was announced related to the uh, credential theft so you have to take care of uh, your own credentials you can't leave the ssh keys on the github it's like uh, telling the world 
go access my system. Uh, there was one more um, recent breach I heard wherein somebody left the, the Slack keys on the GitHub. And while doing OSINT, people found out and then they reported to the company through a dis responsible disclosure so that the company can get to know and without any further delay, they fix that. And when they evaluated, they found out that was actual keys of their Slack where developers were working and they fixed it. So we have to be very cautious when we are dealing with such data. Uh, another thing is that uh, maintenance of uh, security in the cloud is difficult. Um, I would say it's not the case. If you know your environment better uh, and what you're moving to cloud and what services you're going to be using, what securities around that services are there, then you are uh, not in a fit. You can take care of your environment better in the cloud as well. Um, apart from that, I will um, ha yeah. Multi-tenant systems are uh, less secure. That's not the case. Multi-tenant secure systems, uh, they are the there is there's actually no absolutes uh, in cloud security. So uh, multi-tenant systems offer two security benefits over a single tenant system, wherein uh, they provide an additional layer of content protection and they ensure that security patches are always up to date. While cloud, hosties, uh, cloud hosted systems may provide hardware based and perimeter security, those who choose a multi-tenant system get a third party protection called logical content isolation and designated to help uh, prevent inside uh, perimeter attacks. So in that way, you have a secure environment. You choose what you want and you choose what you actually are looking forward. Um, another um, important fact uh, or um, another misconception, I should say, that people uh, say that security slow down uh, the performance in the cloud. So uh, it's about pr uh, protecting your own credentials. Uh, the simplest solution, I would say, uh, would seem to be encrypt everything. Now, if you encrypt everything uh, and you're trying to fetch the data on a daily basis, obviously your system will slow down. So you have to think, you have to prioritize, you have to categorize your own information. What is secure, what is, um, what is confidential, what is uh, critical and what what is uh, not at all what is public if there's something public and you don't need to hide it you don't need to encrypt that so you have to categorize your own information now uh, we've talked about the general myth but how about uh, the myth which ceos developers or even ceos might have right everyone has their own conceptions and sometimes they're not able to discuss also which they need to start talking about and some are even coming up and asking questions and discussing it. So, so CEOs are actually charged with all the strategic planning and operations at their companies. And it's a, actually a lot of responsibility. So they can be forgiven for uh, mistakenly believe that, uh, believing that they, and the, they are, uh, there are capable people, they put in charge of this IT security and doing the right things in the right place. So their security people are doing right thing at the right place, all of it. But how about the threats which just come from the inside? Or uh, the people who are using your cloud services might not, so there's a developer who is not supposed to push the code in the, uh, in the cloud. Why that person needs, uh, needs the full access to the root account? or even need an admin access. You can have their read-only access or even give them the access to only the lower environment. So you can segregate that. And uh, uh, so there's another um, uh, myth that, that comes into picture that attackers can't be stopped. Most computer defenses are so weak and ill-advised that hackers and malwares can, break in, uh, can actually break into that them at will, anytime. And that's only if the malicious intruders haven't already pawned the entire environment. So if you have uh, proper security uh, configurations and mechanisms, we wouldn't say that you are 100% secure, but at least you're taking the best practices, all the cautions in place. You are well aware that this can be done and this shouldn't be done. Apart from that, CISOs. Uh, CISOs have their own myth 
that every time we talk to a company and they say that their data is too important to put in the cloud, we ask them, um, uh, we ask them a lot of questions and specific questions would be that they're using HR or customer relationship management. Invariably, the answer is either a workday or Salesforce or any other XYZ services. Now, if you're using Office 365 or other software as a service platform or applications, uh, they say yes. So we explained that, um, that their data is more critical and they're using customer or their personal, um, their company organization there. That's also a cloud service. So you can't say that, uh, that we are not using cloud at all. So some form you're using cloud, uh, cloud services. And uh, we, we need to start uh, shifting towards cloud security mindset. So that has to come up with a lot of discussion, um, a lot of discussions and a lot of uh, thought thinking and uh, moving the cloud, moving actually to the cloud requires an ability to uh, understand ad and address a uh, lot of considerations like data migration, the business specific capabilities of solutions, change management, governance, system integration, uh, alongside security. So you have to just uh, you have to know your environment and all these myths will go away you would be easy comfortable in the cloud and um, there cannot be any rapid development and the uh, security in the cloud but the reality is that the cloud is actually enabling a technology for DevSecOps because we've been talking uh, or we are talking this is the era of DevSecOps wherein um, Everyone wants to have their systems automated, talk about development. They want to make sure that when they develop, uh, the code should be, uh, the code, the, when the code is ready, they, that should be pushed automatically to the test. And once the test is done, uh, it should be automatically, when the test gets passed, it should be automatically passed to the production, wherein we have imbibed security to it. So uh, now that happens that happens through a lot of cloud services that we are using. So in some way or the other, we are using the cloud services. And uh, so the, we have been talking about the different myths that uh, everyone has. Um, another thing uh, before I go to realities, I want to talk about that uh, monitoring in the cloud is difficult. Uh, it is not difficult at all you need to have the right set of integrations and the tools available and the technologies available and you can actually monitor all all your data and the cloud security reality is cloud security is everyone's responsibility or security is everyone's responsibility um, all has to work together hand in hand to make sure the environment is safe if something happens we cannot blame the CISO we cannot blame the security team development team or anyone it's everyone's responsibility you have to come forward and talk about it discuss it understand your environment and if you have any misunderstanding misconception or question just feel free to post on the forums, discuss with the people who are part of it. And um, your data in the cloud would be safe and sound. Uh, these are the few uh, articles which I've uh, referred to and which, uh, which uh, blogs I've actually gone through and they gave me a good insight on the information that I was looking for and there are many more associated with it. Uh, so if you have any questions around the same topic or you have some feedback or you want to discuss about something, you can reach me uh, on Infosec Vandana on Twitter and um, I am one, like you can uh, search me on LinkedIn as well. Uh, so this is uh, on the topic. Thank you so much for hearing me. If you have any questions, please feel free to drop a question or reach out to me. Thank you so much.